everyone, I'm Uncle Iman and this is my home. Uh, welcome to my studio. This is where I work. Well, what I can show you is just works that I made this year. I made this during MCO, so it was like a drawing of Atta, a boom boom. So I was really drawn to local architecture a few years back, so I got really deep into it and did my research and stuff. So this year I got involved with a publishing team called Sora, so they come out with uh, contemporary art magazines for the youth. I was the person who does the layout design for Sora. So I did issues two to four with them. So, uh, you guys can like check it out at like local bookstores or Kinokuniya and other stuff. This is a zine I made for uh, my friend Siagi, who's a photographer. She was part of the KL 2020 photography exhibition. Um, it was two months ago, is it? Dang it. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. She's amazing. Uh -huh. Siagi. Uh -huh. On my wall here is a piece called Padang Masyarakat by No to Scale. So basically, this piece just speaks a lot about like everything you know when i first saw it i went i'm like what you know <laughs> like um can you yeah. so i bought it and framed it yeah it's a really good piece no to scale i'm the kind of person who's really into frames this is like an old uh vintage frame that i found i have no idea who this photo is by but <laughs> I thought it was really cool and it matches the frame. So yeah, about the whole thing. So this is Moga. This celebrity cat. This is Ruki, my husband's cat. It is badly wrapped, but oh. this piece is actually one of the most talked about, I guess. So this piece says, the antara berikut yang manakah paling ditakuti orang Melayu. I thought it was just funny because people, I feel like Malay people are just afraid of so many things. That is what I get bashed about most of the time. Because when I try to like address it, they just, you know, just like shut me down and say, they would just like get in debates with me and stuff. So I'm the kind of person you mentioned, if I have like an idea and I think that it would be great to like show people, I would just like do it on a bigger scale so that I guess it is more clear that way if, when it's bigger. It's, it's just not something you put in house. Even for me, when I brought this home, I just like flipped it back. <laughs> because <laughs> there was this one time, uh, it's a funny story actually. There was this one time, uh, some delivery guys uh, wanted to send this piano to, to this house. So he saw this piece <laughs> and he got really mad because it's just a way of um, saying something but in a harsh way, I guess. He got mad with his friend. You can't say this kind of stuff, you know. So I'm just like, okay, it's <laughs> okay. Yeah. So here we have one of my works. Uh, I did this in 2016, I think. This is from Sonyum Kambi. <laughs> it was curated by uh, ZXU. It was based on his short story, so he gathered like about 10 artists. So he emailed us and told us to read it, what we macam boleh keluarkan from the story lah. So I thought this was a perfect piece for it. So I decided to show this, yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like younger people are more just like um, drawn to the stuff that I, I do. Most of the time I got questions from students especially uh, because they would want to know more about my thought process 
and how this fits into the world we live in now. So I feel like I have the leverage to like show these people that this could work, but maybe in a different kind of execution. I'm not sure. Ini artwork lama, like it's an installation of wax strip, and I am just just like sew it uh, into a carpet. Is that yours? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's not mine. But I managed to get a lot of hair. It was a last minute thing, so it was funny. Uh, the process was nice because I didn't know how to sew. So I minta tolong from my grandma. Mm. She's like a hardcore sewer. <laughs> so, okay, so this is like a mirror piece I first did for a show in Penang, uh, curated by Ho Fan Chon. I mean, I would say that I was still new back then when everything just like came out. So I didn't really know how to like um, progress, you know? So I decided, oh, why don't I just like play with palindromes? And I was really into typography. So I decided to just like go to Ikea and just like buy two mirrors. These are my flags that I made when I was doing my residency in Japan, uh, specifically Koganicho. So Koganicho is actually like a place that they tr they're trying to gentrify. So they decided to just like open up a um, Koganicho artist residency place thing. So I decided to apply for it. Uh, I'm a resident uh, artist in A2Z Gallery, so they sponsored me back then for this residency. So at the end of my research, I decided to buy flags because when I slowly started to make friends, I um, tried to like ask them more about their culture. And I asked them, I I don't really see uh, Japanese flags being me. Yes. So obviously you can see it everywhere, right? My friend said they actually raised the Japanese flags. It would show that they are far right. Yeah. So they're, they're not really into that. So oh, okay. Yeah. I made this piece for my solo show in Hong Kong. So the show was called Rukun Iman. I actually made like a few pieces for that show. So I produced this and it's actually my favorite piece. A lot of people ask me the meaning behind it. It's just like the fact that the middle guy is covering the B. So I just, I, I like to work with like keywords and just like, you know, illusions. Not, this is not really an illusion, but like, uh, it's supposed to say, God bless you, right? I felt like it says something. Okay, so these are some of the books that I thought I would recommend. This is one of the key books that I really, <laughs> that I really just much I'm like refer to every now and then. It's a book called Japanese Masters, and they much feature stuff by graphic design masters from Japan. And I just, I suka gila buku ni, I just like look through it every time I have a chance to. So this is actually a book by Takayuki Yamamoto. It's called Most Wanted. Elementary school students in Japan made drawings of some of the most wanted criminals. Yes, that's the idea. So if you have seen any of these individuals, please contact your local police station immediately. Do not attempt to apprehend or detain any of these individuals by yourself. I just rasa it's like best gila babi. So macam bila ibu sambu sana, I just like look through and sometimes macam just lifts up my mood, you know. Yeah, this is one of the most important books from my collection. It's called Sulaiman. My shushi Sulaiman. She is one of. Um, the artist that I kenal awal-awal before I started everything. So this book ada cerita banyak pasal her works and her background and everything lah. Her journey dekat Japan, dekat uh, France and everything. I just love it. It's amazing. 
So everyone has to read this, Sulaiman. It's just the everyday things in life that I see sometimes. Kalau macam like I keluar makan ke apa, you know, if I see something yang macam pelik or you know, it's happening right in front of my eyes, tapi macam it's something yang orang fikir tabu, but it's just there. Faham tak? Tak tahu lah macam mana cakap. <laughs> but, um, yeah, bila when I see those things, it's sort of like an inspiration to me lah. Because sometimes when I tanya orang sensitive questions, dia orang tak faham that I would, I just nak tanya and like, you know, get an answer. It's not really about like, not challenge, you know? I just see like a lot of things that needs to be questioned. I not be a little macam nakal sikit, but in a good way. I don't know. Because I rasa benda tu macam best. And I just rasa macam benda tu is easy for me to talk about. If I draw something yang buat orang triggered, um, if I do it in my way, yang, which is the okay way, the subtle way, would they accept it? But most of the time, uh, inspiration comes from like people watching, couple, you know, books especially, and dialogues, the, the kind of things that we talk with our friends. We just need to mention all of this so that we can just like be able to manage it. Because if we don't talk about these things, macam benda ni akan like tertanam. Maybe some sensitive things should be talked about and just like buat orang faham lah. Yeah. And conversations doesn't always have to end in a bad way. You know, it doesn't always have to be like a debate lah. From a conversation you have with your friend at the end of it, maybe you can learn something from it. Tak kisahlah benda buruk ke, benda baik ke. And it might help you in your progress. <laughs> yeah, je. Ready? <laughs> <laughs>